Excellent. And I will, I'm going to read off the uh, who's playing who here for this game. Uh, again, this is the round of four game for the um, Dominic Dominion.com League of Legends Dominion Tournament, number 38. we got Sauron playing as Talon, Zabers playing as Jarvan the Fourth, Magi Melkor playing as Poppy, High Peoples playing as Zyra, Necrogen playing as Brand, makes up point defense. And for Cheese Enema, we have Sifu Calvin as Nidalee, Brown Bruiser as Lisa, and Krog playing as Pantheon, Lurch playing as Nunu, and Wowix playing as Lulu. They are Cheese Enema. It's Pepper Jack. Nunu's Lulu's Zombie Brand is great to see. Bewitching Nidalee. Also great to see. It still cracks me up every time I watch Zombie Brand try to run across the map. It is the most ridiculous thing that they've put on a skin so far. Um, you know, Scarlet, Scarlet Hammer Poppy just makes her look even scarier as a Yordle. Um, that's my second favorite skin, the first one obviously being Lollipoppy. There's nothing better than beating somebody down with a Lollipop and a bar of chocolate as your shield. Yeah, that's it's pretty thing. neat. Yeah, it's kind of odd to see... Uh the double pause, you know, in one game and in another game, but, you know, sometimes tech things happen, and uh, people gotta handle it, so... There's no... items or anything to worry about right now, so... Let's let's speculate on who's gonna win the windmill fight. Do you think Ooh, the windmill fight, I think that the... I think Nidalee, if she lands some solid spears, would give her team a pretty nice advantage, but Zyra's got really good, like, really good zoning and interruption. Right. I think if Zyra lands a good root early before the spears do a lot of damage, that they're going to be able to win that fight. Um, with Poppy's burst damage and Jarvan being able to come in on his standard and knocking people up, along with the, the Talon, you know, the, the silence rake and damage, I think that they will win the level 1 if they do get a good root. If they don't get a good root, they are going to get poked, poked and poked until they are not going to be able to stay there very long. Wowix is number 1 Argentina player. Or Chile, I forget where he is. He's from South America, so sometimes his computer goes crazy. I saw that he had a very high latency, 200 and something. Yep. And he still managed to play pretty solid with that. He's been playing with that latency for so long, it's just like he doesn't care anymore. It's like, do 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 do. I uh, like you play I, on EU long enough, you just lead your shots by that extra little bit. Yeah, I actually play on. I have a Smurf on EU that I play every once in a while. Um, but uh, man, I can I can't even get used to last hitting. It takes me like three games just to just to get used to that. Yep. Europe West has a, a pretty active Dominion community, too, by the way. Um, their chat channel is just called Dominion, and their tournaments are run by the Four Players League uh, uh, organization over there. So if you have any friends on the Europe West or you play on Europe West yourself, you know, there's a lot of dudes over there. Cycle Goods, Cillian, Breath the Dying, um, Bass the One, Dominus Arts, guys like that. All really good Dominion players over there, hardware. There's a lot of really active dudes on that server. And a Hextech Revolver coming out on Nunu for even more sustain. And definitely going to be going down to that bottom lane and just going to be able to outlast anybody that he comes up against. Um, it might be... Necrogen brand yeah. bottom lane. Ooh. Uh, Necrogen's very a very dedicated bottom lane player. I don't think I've seen brand bottom. I think Maybe I've seen it once. So this will be interesting. I think he's probably going to focus on removing the minions and not trying to remove the Nunu. Because the minions can't heal themselves, but Nunu is going to be absolutely unstoppable with three of each pot and his consume. Um, curious if he put it. No, he put one point in each ability. I was curious if he's going to go two into consume early, just for even more mm -hmm. snowball and auto attack harass. But he did go with one point in each ability. Whereas Brand went with a double pillar of flame, so he is looking for that. That pillar of flame, which does the majority of his damage when you land it. They're yeah, gonna go for that. They're gonna have really good clear down there too. So the other thing you see, you see people boost their AOEs up really early. When you see Brand bottom lane, usually max spirit fire first, and doesn't get the siphon until later, which is another interesting thing. Like bottom lane's a really cool part about this game. And there's the rake from town. There's the uh, Melkor. That was scary right there. See Zyra getting that zoning off already. Yeah, Jarvan coming straight in with the standard, knocking everybody up, trying to slow them down while they get a little bit of the channel onto this turret. And Poppy not quite getting the stun. They're going to come back with a devastating blow. Pantheon trying to zone Talon and Zyra. But Poppy in a lot of trouble. As tanky as she gets when she's low, not enough to keep her alive. Now it's a 3v4 with the 1v1 on Jarvan and Lee Sin. Jarvan going to be able to take out that kill with the help of Talon. 
and it looks like they might cap this point. He used his rake a little early. He did stop it, but he is going to have to retreat here. A good Pantheon stun coming in. The infinite slow from Lulu, and it does look like they're going to take this this top engagement. Poppy is back with her revive up. Does get one kill up top. Uh, Nunu actually super low down bottom, dying to Brand. Even with all that sustain, that Ignite, I guess, helped solidify that kill. Poppy just trying to buy some time. Gets a shutdown kill onto Pantheon while Talon comes back. And all Talon needs is just a little bit of range on that Lulu to to get that kill on her. Oh, he does, but he gets polymorphed right when he gets the Lulu. A great use of that ability. Jarvan coming back, Nidalee coming back, and Poppy looking for the final devastating blow onto Lulu. But it's once again back to a 3v3 up top. All the revives have been used now. Jarvan trying to trying to make something happen. He has delayed this long enough. But he, they, he did eat a full range spear. He's got less than one bar of health. Poppy hitting six, using diplomatic immunity to try to get the kill onto Lee Sin, but getting kited a little too far as she tries to fall back here. And Zyra still uh, getting that good zoning off using those AoEs of hers there. Getting progressively lower and lower on mana. Brown Bruiser was driven out of the fight though, but he's managed to make his way back up and not needing mana himself. He's still kind of threatening to put out the hurt. Crowd with a stun on Sauron right there, but J4 comes over the wall, throws down the airborne and the Cataclysm. Sauron right back into the fight right there. Gonna put down some DPS there, but wow, she's got that extra health from the ultimate right there. Zyra's gonna get picked off up there. Reset line effect. Oh, so close. Wowix. Almost being taken down right there, but it looks like things are going to be okay. And we're going to see the synchronized revive up there, but I, but, but, but Melkor gets a free tower. Yeah, they were all so low. They knew that they were pretty much one hit away from Poppy, even if they Poppy, even if they did stop the Poppy um, from that cap right away, that one devastating blow after an audacious charge was going to be the end of their life. So it does look like they're coming back up top. Pantheon ulting in onto Poppy, doing a good amount of damage. Talon there, but he did not stop the cap, so he decides to fall back to his teammates. While Nidalee gets the shield, Storm Shield, out in the middle lane. And she is, it looks like she's going to go more AP um, with her build, if she will not be a bruiser. They do get revealed into that bush. Nidalee trying to get some blind spears, checking the bushes with her traps. But... I don't see much action happening. Looks like they're going to try to push up this wave. Pantheon being in a bad spot, getting slammed for half of his health. Talon coming in on him. Pantheon's going to drop right away to Jarvan. And now it's a 4v3 up top, and they already they have the turret, so they're not going to lose this cap right away. It'll probably just be a little bit of poke and a disengage from red side. Yeah, you can see them go ahead and falling back right there. I mean, without having Pantheon, who's one of their big damage dealers, because Pantheon, I'd say Pantheon is better early game than later game, but he's still solid throughout. And without him there to deliver that stuff, ooh, Melkor, Melkor, I'm scared for you, man. That was more than half of Poppy's health in one shot right there. So those spears are a force to be reckoned with. Goes for Sauron, Sauron says, nope, I played a minion, I know how to dodge. It's a skill shot. Lisa not able to connect. Unfortunately, they're pushing the minions up. Minions are going to get a little bit of capture in. Sauron goes in. Pops the ultimate right there. But Poppy uh, right there following up, trying to get Simple Calvin down. High people's in from the back is able to help with that. Sauron running solo. Lulu picks up the kill with the Glitter Lance right there. Pops up her HP a little bit with the ultimate. Trying to stay alive as long as she can. Gets the sloth on Zabers. Picks up the health relic. Is Poppy going to... Or not Poppy, excuse me. Is that other Yordle going to escape? Yeah, it looks like Lulu got away with a wild growth, just enough HP, grabbed a couple of health relics, and she's going to be safe for now. But they did successfully successfully defend that point along with bottom as Poppy went down there to help out Necrogen a little bit. Necrogen getting the first kill onto the Nunu. I was really shocked to see that happen. Um, but it must have been a great play. I saw him just barely chase him away with the ignite onto Lurch, uh, securing that first kill down in the bottom lane. Got red team over here, cheese another by the speed shrine, grouping up again. Once Pan Pantheon leading the charge. Now Poppy up at the top, but they don't know that Poppy's there because Poppy's behind the windmill. It's pushing pretty aggressively here over down the finery. Are we gonna, is this going to bring Poppy down? Is Melkor going to come down to get into this engagement? It looks like, uh, nope, still hesitant on it. Sabres takes some damage. High Peoples is hanging out as well. Poppy's still up at the top. No, Poppy has recalled. Poppy making her way up to the fight from the bottom now, but that doesn't leave anyone up there at the top. So they're starting to fall back towards the windmill. There's no one behind to try and, try and catch them in a sort of a pincer maneuver or a flank or anything like that. 
Sarn gets tagged by a slow little bit. And there's a lot of poke. There's poke coming from Lulu. Krog gets caught right there. The airborne doesn't connect. Unfortunately, Krog's probably going to be able to get away there. Now, Zaber's extended a little bit far and he takes some damage for it as a result. Sarn throws out the rake to do a little bit there. But, oh, Lee Sin, he's, he's committed. He wants Zaber. Zaber's dash is out. Brown Bruiser face down in the dirt as a result. Now, Sifu Calvin gets caught there. But, no, Cat Hop followed up by the exhaust, though. Exhaust might seal the deal. Wow, it's prolonging his friend's life for a little bit there. Big Bad Cat. Not so big anymore after that nice, that, that exhaust popped right after the jump was what really managed to take that home right there. But while that was going on, the minions got a lot of capturing on the turret up here, though. And Wowix going up there to try and capitalize, threatening to capture, but Zabers puts Wowix in the box, and they're up in the air. Got the airborne from High Peoples as well. Doesn't connect with the second shot. Wowix is going to be able to back off and be okay for right now. Clock frozen, 466, 360, or 357, excuse me, in favor of point defense. Wowix turns around to try and defend right there. Uh oh, puts a little bit of damage up, but has to, has to scoot on away. Brown Bruiser from the back takes care of J4, and now is chasing High Peoples out of the fight. Melkor has something to say to that other Yordle, and, uh, and it's going to go in for High Peoples, but no, Leeson's going to finish that off before Poppy can pick it up. Brown Bruiser taking so much damage right there. Poppy on a roll with a double kill right there. Diplomatic immunity is down. Is Melkor going to get that? Nope, not going to get that triple kill. Sauron's going to pick up that instead, but now Sauron and Krog are having a little bit of a disagreement of sorts. Sauron is tired of arguing, and he feels a little exhausted. He's going to back off just a tad right there, and he's going to hang out and just kind of kind of trade from afar with the little clicks on this tower. Yeah, Sauron does not want to get engaged from a stun or he'll be in a lot of trouble without his uh, shadow assault up to get out of there. If Pantheon can land a stun, he can definitely end Sauron's life. It looks like he's a little too close right now. Oh, here comes the Lulu. Great silence on his way back. Unable to get the stun, but Brown Bruiser just going to walk up, slow him, give the vision. Still no ultimate up. And the Sonic Wave Resident Strike, the chase onto Zabers, but Magic Melkor is here back, and she has finished her Iceborne Gauntlet, so she will slow and do additional damage from that sheen on every devastating blow. So it looks like they're going to disengage. Um, Zebras might be heading down bottom after grabbing a Health Relic to hopefully... Oh, it looks like they already secured the kill onto Nunu. Necrogen hopefully going to be pushing forward with Zyra. Poppy being the first one onto the turret, which is the quest right now, which will give them a 10% damage buff to their entire team if they do finish it. Melkor sensing that there's a spear coming, gets out of the way of it, and it looks like they're going to fall back for another disengage as Brand goes back to base. Yeah, that was a pretty quick kill down there at the bottom. They caught Nunu with a snare, and the Necrogen was able to follow up with a with a stun there. All good things up the top. Brown Bruiser gets caught by a slow, and the Cataclysm box said, Get out, Zabers! You're not allowed! Gets thrown right out of the ultimate. Has to go back. The, the, the spell has failed. The jig is up. It's foiled again. Ah! Yeah, that was a great Dragon's Rage, knocking Jarvan out of his own Cataclysm and protecting Lee Sin as he cleared that minion wave. A lot of spears going through the orange stand over there. The fruit stand in the middle of the map. Spook Calvin hanging out right by. I wonder what the insurance on that property is. With all this going on. Ooh, oh, a good gets caught. line. Knock nice flash. Knock land. Oof. A very, very good play by Nidalee to get out of there, but an excellent blind root from Zyra with double plants up too. Yep. Just had a feeling. Well, no, no, it wasn't so much blind because he had seen the spears being thrown. Yeah. So, good guess. Wasn't necessarily sure. The half blind. He had one eye closed. Yeah, and his plants, her plants do give vision, so after her plants had spawned in that bush, she could see that they were auto-attacking in Italy, so she popped down the ultimate, not unable to do it. The diplomatic immunity coming out onto the Lulu's not doing a lot of damage right now, and Poppy trying to zone out their team, taking Pantheon very low, putting out the exhaust. Brown Bruiser also exhausted, and the wild growth, Dragon's Rage coming out, Lulu going down, Pantheon getting one more stun onto Talon, but unable to kill him. Brown Bruiser in a lot of trouble here. Poppy picking up the double kill. And Sifu Calvin just has to retreat as she kind of falls around. Maybe chuck a spear for Talon. It looks like they're all going to run away from the spear range. And she does get one spear. You notice she tried to do the jump. She tried to spear and then jump away for additional damage on that spear. All the pro Nidalee players know that the further you are from your spear, no matter when you threw it, the better. Down at the bottom, not a lot going on. Necrogen, Lurch exchanging some damage. Lurch gets lit on fire, he eats a minion. He doesn't care about being on fire so much. 
Yeah, it seems like after the Rileys is completed on Brand and the Abyssal completed onto Lurch, the Nunu, it kind of turned into a little bit of a stalemate. They both have Ignite, they both have uh, either the ability to kite or sustain. So they're doing a, a good job versus each other down there. The Blackfire Torch finally being finished, though, on Brand should give him a little bit of an advantage, um, even though he does not have any magic resist but the Merc Treads. And up top, Zyra getting caught out and taking big damage from Red Team as they collapse on top of her, trying to take this point. Talon popping out the ultimate, but he still has vision. He's going to go down to Lulu right now. And Nidalee very low. She is going to go down. A double kill for Jarvan, looking to pick up his third with Poppy here onto Lulu. And High Peoples missing the stun over the wall. And there it is. Poppy getting the devastating blow for another kill, securing that top point, and slowly whittling the points away from Red Team here. Yeah, point defense doing a really good job up there in that in that top engagement. And Brand going down here wants to make sure he's able to survive. Uh oh, Sauron getting caught in the jungle. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Sauron gets slow right there. Krog with the revive is right there, but he managed to slow him with the rake, so that Krog's not able to connect with the stun. Civil Calvin doing a really good job of chasing. Is someone gonna come down here to bail him out? Is Melkor gonna want a piece of this? Nah, he's all right. Ekrogen at the bottom, though, things look a little bit bad for him. Gets caught with the slow, gets caught with the stun, gets caught with the Heartseeker strike, gets caught with the exhaust, and gets caught with a free trip back to the summoner platform. A little bit of a little, little graveyard stone popping up. A great move by Lurch there. He actually moved away from Karog when the the ultimate came out on him, so it didn't get even one bang, one bounce for him. Necrogen trying to stop the cap at this point. 1v3, getting a good amount of damage out of Pantheon, but they will get the quarry and the quest, so now they have the 10% damage buff for a little while to hopefully hopefully cap back their the drill, which was taken during that skirmish down bottom. You see Wowix going for the refinery, and Nunu going the same way as well. Looks like they're going to... Position's going to get a little crazy here for a second. Over here at the drill, Civil Calvin's trying to take that back, and Xavier's doing a little bit of poke to kind of keep that from happening. They were able to get the neutral off over here. Wowix put, goes away for a second. They do break the channel, though, and um, they're just going to kind of leave that run. Right Brand is able to pick up his tower back, but they're going for the Boneyard on the other end of the map. There's no one up at the top to defend the windmill, so Cheezum is going up that way. Wowix is trying to delay this neutral point over here for as long as he can. Nunu is going back down to the Boneyard in order to stop Necrogen and Sauron from doing anything. Krog and Civil Calvin have the top under control. Wowix dies over by the refineries and able to take the refinery back, but Zabra's only going to interrupt one of them. Civil Calvin might have been able to cap that if he hadn't have broken it off when he did. Badgy Melkor up there, but low on health, and the Cataclysm is going to keep Krog in, but also keeps Melkor out. Oh, he does manage to dash through Connect right there, and now Zabra's looking a little bit worse for wear. Krog, that heal right there there from Civil Calvin, going to keep Krog alive. Top is neutral, bottom is neutral down there. Nunu was able to delay them for a while, and then Lee Sin came down there. Wasn't quite able to kill Necrogen, but Lurch is there, and he just did one good snowball to win. He's got the Bud Boil going for the increased movement speed. He's going to be able to connect. No, not anymore, unfortunately. Necrogen gets forced away. Nunu's going to go back and take up the Bone Yard, and now things are a lot less crazy. Yeah, it looks like Lulu's going to come in for this kill onto Bran, and a pretty easy target after she grabbed vision of him in the bush, even though he landed his stun that time. Lurch almost put the end on him, but he actually made it into the shadows right before the snowball was cast. Talon jumping onto the Lulu here, but Lulu doing a great job at kiting. Ooh, big damage coming off from those devastating blows. Talon actually using his shadow assault to finalize the kill onto Lulu. And up top, it's Pantheon Nidalee versus Jarvan and Zyra, who's almost dead. Brown Bruiser coming in to help. Melakor, though, chasing behind him, getting knocked up. Brown Bruiser in a lot of trouble here, taking big damage from that poppy. Ooh, a good kick over into his team. Pantheon with a stun onto Jarvan, but Jarvan's not having it. He's got a bigger spear and put it right through Jarvan's face for the kill. And then Lee Sin going down in the back to Zyra, who's just barely living, barely surviving to those minions. And they're going to recap this top windmill. Yeah, Zyra actually picked up the kill on Lee Sin there at the very end. Um, knowing that you have mana and being a champion that has range and uh, control like that, you just hang around. That's the delay part of the durable and delay. Sauron getting caught up here at the top, and uh-oh, it's like... Scroll Sauron is the most unfortunate Sauron for him to be right there. Melkor getting dived on the tower really hard, but trying to stay alive and is able to delay for a little bit, but wasn't enough time for J4 to be able to get up there and stop this from getting a full capture. He's going to go with, drop the standard right there, but can't get all the way in, unfortunately. And while that happened, Lurch is pushing in onto Brand. Seems to be getting the upper hand down in this, in this bottom lane. 
And he's zoning Brand away from the tower right now. Pantheon is showing up. It looks like they're going to try to get this cap right here. Brand actually falling short of stopping Lurch from the cap. Krog's going to get hit with the Pillar of Flame. There it is. And they are going to protect this, but it was neutralized, stopping the point game for blue team for a little bit. Um, Talon looking to chase, but the blood boil out onto Pantheon and, and Nunu is proving to save their lives. Ooh, big damage coming out from Poppy though. Talon actually picking up that kill with his bleed, and it looks like they're gonna try to finish off the Pantheon here. A great, oh, the damage, oh my goodness. Pantheon with, with a couple auto attacks to finish off the Talon before he died to Magic Melkor. And they're going to be able to turn that around because they still have the, 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 the Resurrect timer going, ticking down. Uh, but at the same time, the fight went backwards up there at the Windmill, and Zyra was able to get interrupted on one person, though, while he's standing in a good spot. You want to spread out against people that have line effects and dominions so that you don't all get interrupted at the same time when a point tries to get captured. So it looks like you're going to turn around the Refinery in exchange for the Boneyard, and they might be able to get the Boneyard back. I don't know if they're going to want to keep the refinery or they're just going to let it go. So they're going to let it go and they're all going to descend on the lower part of the map right now. Looks like you got a couple hanging out there to delay on that. Pantheon coming down to that point right there. Going to try and catch it. Nope, Saber's not going to have any of that. He just leaves. Walls don't matter. This is this is League of Legends. Well, the game is uh, the game's made up by Riot and the walls only matter sometimes. High people's getting chunked to half health from Sifu Calvin there. And they will finish out the cap. Um, down below here, Bran trying to recap it, but Pantheon's there to defend along with Nunu. I don't think he's going to be able to take this turret 2v1 unless he gets the perfect ultimate. And right now, blue team looking like it's hurting right now. Lulu doing a great job stopping all three from capping this turret. And Nidalee just trying to poke with more spears, but unable to land a couple good ones. Jarvan sparring off with her in kitten form. But that cat is out of there. I don't care how many lives she has, she is not going to stay and go 1v1 with Jarvan. Melkor getting uh, pushed away from the Boneyard down here. Melkor stayed around there for a little while and um, tried to try and keep that neutral, and he was able to do so. Over here, Krog's Pantheon is a little bit too weak to try and start that fight, though. But Brown Bruiser's coming around from the side. Looks like he's going to connect with Necrogen. He's going to be able to take him down, though. Yeah. Kicking some zombie butt right there. Call him Z Squad. That's what's up. And he's gonna walk right into Zyra. Nope. He's gonna turn a hard right. He doesn't wanna deal with the plant lady. And uh, not gonna get caught by anything on the way out. And that point's gonna get picked up. Lulu trying to put pressure on the refinery. Maybe not trying, but succeeding rather. It is drawing people away. And that's what pressure is designed to do. Saber's going in for that. Zyra waiting over there in the bushes. And Civil Calvin. Oh, thanks for Melkor for a lot of damage right there. But High People's in a great position right there to contain Sifu. Sifu gets the bonus health right there from Lulu and is able to hop on away. Crowley catches High People's. And now High People's pop that uh, Wooglitz right there. Does get taken down though. All it does is keep her alive for a little bit longer. Yeah, Lee Sin's looking like a scary force right now. His Dragon's Rage at the moment is doing almost 1,000 AD damage before her armor. So when he landed that onto Brand, Brand had nothing that he could do to stay alive. He didn't even get knocked back. It was a KO from one quarter health. And it looks like he's actually going to caught out a 2v1 here, but Nidalee's coming in to help. And going to be popping the Randuin's Omen, everybody being slowed. Brown Bruiser coming down, the Nunu Snowball going to pick up the kill onto Jarvan. And it looks like they're going to chase out of this one and grab Brand, who's a, in a bad position right now. He's going to pop the ultimate and some AoE, but it's not going to be enough to get a kill versus those three Bruisers. Now, WoW is delayed for a really long time up at the upper end of the map, but did get taken out. And leaves Zyra uh, able to take the Windmill. And it looks like that's what we're going to see. Nidalee's heading up top to try and deal with that right now. Krog is trying to keep Sauron and Melkor away from the bottom point while Nunu caps. And it looks like he's been successful in doing so. Uh, Necrogen and Zabers are not able to get down to the bottom point fast enough in order to take it. She's up four points to one right now, having recovered the gap that they were down earlier on in the game. However, Nidalee was not able to take down Zyra up at the top, unfortunately. Just by the narrowest margin, though. So... They are going to get that tower back. They get the bottom back. And now Point Defense has got their three towers, but how long are they going to be able to hold on to it for? Zyra is going to have to recall or just be really low on health. They do have Sauron Melkor here, so yeah, Zyra's going to go ahead and recall. 
And we got Poppy heading up towards the top, running over a couple of niddly traps in the process. See, Reggie Melkor's health is ticking down, 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 and a burning ring of black fire torch debuff. Throws the spear to zone a little bit, keep her from being able to get in and connect with that devastating blow right there. But are we going to see that cataclysm? Do we have it available? Yes, box him in right there. Saber's keeping him back. Brown Bruiser and Sauron over on the other side, but then Sauron jumps away into the thick of things, but only to get taken down by Pantheon. And the defensive garrison goes down on the tower, making it shoot for that AoE damage. Damage right there. She didn't want to get hit by it. Now, High Peoples is pretty fragile. Oh, oh. dear. That wasn't just fragile. That was fragile. That's that's oh. a neutral tower right there. In the passives, getting the revenge onto the Nidalee, who chunked down from half health that Zyra with a spear. In the passive, taking it out. Ooh, a good stop to the absolute zero by Brand down here. He does have the upper hand. He is going to land a pillar of flame. A consume trying to keep him alive, but he did have the ignite on him. A snowball trade. There is no health relic, and it looks like he's between a rock and a hard place as Poppy's going to show up and finish off this fight. He is going to eat a snowball, but it's not going to be enough for him to get away as he goes back for another consume. As Ira trying to take top point, Pantheon dropping in, oh. but Zyra popping the Zonias right away, not taking a lot of that damage. Brown Bruiser looking to do a little bit of extra damage. Uh, Zyra landing all of her abilities, but it was not enough, and she shoots her passive in the wrong direction, not getting that kill onto Pantheon. And it looks like they're going to go for the refinery right now. Uh, Sifu Calvin neutralizing that point with Wawix, and... There, the drill is going to be taken by Jarvan and Poppy, although Nunu is up with Blood Boil coming in as fast as he can. Nunu playing good defense, slowing him down. Jarvan decides, well, let's just fight this Nunu and push him off this turret as Red Team takes the refinery. And that puts the three cap on the upper end of the map and the two cap on the other end of the map. It's kind of been some weird rotational symmetry throughout this entire game. Uh, Melkor keeping on Krog right there. Zaber's getting zoned back out. And Melkor taking some damage. Goes in with the airborne. Throws down the Cataclysm. But no. Can get shut down by Pantheon. Now it's Lurch and Melkor. And that snowball. That damage right there. Lurch is at full health. Poppy is at not so full health. We'll see if he can handle the Yordle. You can't consume it. So you're just going to have to beat it up with your auto attacks. And it is going to be okay for you. Nunu. Yeah, it looks like they're going to rotate down to the Boneyard. Pantheon starting the cap on that. Uh, Sauron on Talon looking to stop this. He might not be in time. Yeah. Nunu stopping with a snowball. He does get the rake across, and now he is going to be in a lot of trouble if they do decide to fight against this. But the longer he delays it, the better for his team. And Lurch going 1v1 to Sauron, but Lurch out of mana now. Sauron can probably take him. Oh, enough mana for the Absolute Zero. A good silence and a kill for Sauron. But now Sauron in the bad end of a 2v1. As Brand comes down, Nitrogen starts recapping. But is not going to stay around for long. He does not want to 1v2 a very strong Lee Sin right now. Who's 14, 9, and 13, and a Pantheon with that CC. Uh oh, gonna tag Krog right there and get him with the stun right there. Brown Bruiser goes in the with Necrogen because he knows how much damage he can do to Necrogen. And now it's a two on Melkor right here. And is Melkor gonna be able to survive? Things do not look very good for Poppy, unfortunately. Might be able to take Brown Bruiser in the exchange? No, not quite. Didn't get another hit in uh, beforehand to try and get that, uh, that, that one item. Get that Iceborne Gauntlet damage going right there. And, uh, yep, and it looks like Jarvan's jumping in, in on Sifu Calvin. Tons of damage coming down and annihilating the Nidalee in a wrong spot. Randall's only coming up from Wawix, trying to defend this point with every pixie she has, but not able to stop both of them at the same time. The point is now neutralized. Wawix is exhausted. Zabras is just chasing on this, but Lee Sin's coming to help. And with a nice sonic wave, res resonating strike, takes out that low health Jarvan. It amps the damage up. Ooh, a good bind and dodge from High Peoples. She just needs a little bit more damage. And Brown Bruiser, getting, she's getting kited around her plants. A plant on each oh. end, taking him out. Great positioning of plants. And Wawix going down to the standard of Jarvan. And what an excellent play by High Peoples right there, kiting in between two slowing plants. Now things have been completely flipped around. Zyra kind of using that plant as a pillar in order to keep the skill shots from being able to land right there. And down the bottom, Brand having picked up this tower, throws the four cap in point defense's favor, whereas just moments ago, it was Cheese Enema that had that four cap. And in the middle over here, Sauron, oh, so much damage from Italy right there. Civil Calvin is able to go in and connect and take down Sauron, but Melkor and Zabers are right there. They have got their friends back over there. Wowix is going to be able to keep, take this tower, get a neutral on it, and take that second one back. 
But over in the side of the map, Melkor's getting really low on health. Necrogen's trying to do what he can from the back. He has plenty of mana, but not a lot of health. And Zaber's just getting chased and chased and chased. There was the absolute zero. That turned out to not be completely necessary, but it was good to have it in his insurance anyway. And now we got Brown Bruce and Wildox heading up to the top. All they have to do is get up there, take down Zyra, and get the neutral off on the tower. But they have to do it before Sauron is able to a lot arrive. Because if they're not able to pull that off, then it's going to be bad news bears for them. And High Peoples has got all the damage to go. Uh-oh. Here comes Pantheon. In down from the top. Krawak is the reinforcements who have shown up. Civil Calvin for the bomb. Sauron's health forgot that it had to be in the health bar. And it has been removed. The offensive garrison on the tower. Or is it going to go neutral? Can Krawak stop the... Yes! The clock has it stopped at 10 to 14. What wins this fight might just win the game. Zoni is coming out from Sifu Calvin. They're going to take down the Pantheon. Magic Melkor is going to drop to the Nidalee. And it looks like they're going to win this exchange. and going to be able to recap this top turret. Starting the points back in their favor. They only need it for another 8 points, and they're going to be able to cap this and win the game. I don't see any way of them being able to stop this in a very well-played game from both teams here, and not able to pull it out, though. The blue team is going to go down 0-14, to 14, and that is the game. And Cheese Enema is going to advance to the finals, ladies and gentlemen, of this tournament. Finals is a best of three, so we get to see what they can do. In, the, in these uh, next couple, next couple or three of games going on, I don't know what you in this next couple or triple.